So I have this student called as Amreen Khan and uh, earlier she was a Watson scholar then she was again selected for the Crick Star scholarship and uh, she emails me on a, almost on a daily basis and most of the times I don't reply because I'm very busy. She will share every step of her career and if the email is really important I definitely reply but Today, the email which I received one hour back, she has posed me seven questions, actually seven questions. And these questions uh, are very important. So I, I decided to make videos on this so that it's not just Amreen, all of you should get the benefit. So the first question which she has posed for uh, me and for all of you is, uh, what are the career paths you should choose or you can choose after your master's in life sciences? Now, majority of the students uh, feel that the core biotech field is completely saturated and there is going to be no growth. But the truth is, if you just follow the LinkedIn pages of all these biotech companies, you'll realize that they are hiring on a weekly basis, almost daily they have a vacancy and you have to just follow them or probably you have to just be subscribed to Biotechnica, that's where all the jobs will come. But now let me uh, broadly divide this field into seven or eight um, subfields which you can follow. Now, if you are interested in biopharmaceuticals research or any core research, then of course R&D, so that's the research and development. So you can engage in innovative uh, work in labs. Now, it's not necessary to have a PhD. However, having a PhD gives you added advantage that the salary will be higher, that's all. And especially if you have a PhD, then of course the government has this benchmark that the PhDs only can apply for this particular position. So that's where you will be safe. So that's where the PhD comes into picture. Otherwise, formulation and development and R and research and development, you can straight away go and start your work. So that's where if it is pharma, it is formulation and development. If it is biotech research and development, of course, research and development is also there in pharma. So this is the first career path which you can follow. The second one which you can follow is the QA, QC model. So once the product is, so this is actually a uh, monetized model where the product is coming on the bench every uh, second now and uh, you have to do random sampling, you have to check the quality, you have to do a quality analysis and find out the flaws and also check if the uh, the team or the protocols are being followed by the team. So this is where quality assurance and quality uh, control will come into picture and all the pharma, all the biotech, all the chemistry industry has this um, QAQC department. In fact, uh, a lot of uh, government bodies has QAQC. You have even, uh, you know, water uh, fun parks like uh, SL World and Underlay, even they have vacancies for QAQC. So yeah, that's where uh, it lies down. The third would be regulatory affairs. And uh, recently I was talking to an employee of a pharma company where regulatory affairs is there. So what she said is regulatory affairs is not always a desk job. It can also be a field job. So you have to be aware of this. So regulatory affairs is where uh, you can also make a career where you have to uh, take approvals for new products and ensure the, that they all comply with the laws and regulations of the country. So uh, you may be uh, licensing and talking to a lot of government officers. So uh, this may not be suitable for a lot of women uh, employees, but yeah, regulatory affairs is one direction where you can go. The next one will be obviously clinical research, which is obvious. There are a lot of CROs, uh, a lot of clinical research is happening across the country and um, you can coordinate in clinical trials, you can monitor in the clinical trials, you can uh, also look at if the protocols are being followed if uh, and then of course you collect the results and send it to the you know your head office and uh, you know this is the entire process generally and uh, Clini India is a company which is uh, doing a lot of uh, training and placement in the clinical research if you are interested you can always apply for their online clinical research courses which is there. Now, many students ask me, sir, all of these are, um, you know, slow moving, like you uh, start at a lower salary and it doesn't grow. So that's not the truth. It is. But one of the biggest and the fastest growing uh, field in biotech, it will be sales and marketing where you are selling whether it is uh, inside sales or um, you know field sales. So there are two types of sales. Field sales will be where you're going in meeting a doctor or probably meeting uh, institute uh, HODs and all and you are trying to market your product. So that's one. Inside sales will be where you are uh, making calls uh, to the potential customers and talking to them and maintaining a relationship and then you are trying to make a sale. So 
and you need to have the technical knowledge of the product only then you can sell so obviously um, a master's in biotechnology is preferred preferred but now uh, what is very important here to note is sales and marketing career grows very very fast you will you can really if you are from a poor background and you need to support the family then sales and marketing is the best foot forward to make a lot of money quickly but yeah uh, eventually the PhDs will win that you should know right so that's where uh, the sales and marketing comes the next will be biotech consulting so you can become a consultant obviously for that you have to gain experience so you can't just really start uh, fresh and have become a consultant you have to gain experience in various pharmaceutical and biotech companies and once you have uh, like like say five or ten years of experience then you can become a consultant and you can consult given give your expertise and outsource your expertise to various companies and these companies will pay you to uh, do the jobs for example i do a lot of uh, biotech and pharmaceutical uh, consulting so uh, that gives me some extra money so that's where it will be and then of course you have freelancing where you can become a biotech freelancer or a bioinformatics free freelancer where you get the data raw data from these companies analyze it and then send it back with your report so that's where uh, these are the, i think seven or eight pointers i shared with you now the most important question students say that okay i i know the list but tell me which will be the most suitable one so see if you are looking for quick money fast then sales and marketing if you are looking for growth the real growth in the next 20 years where uh, you as a employee wins and you have i mean there is a lot of demand of your work and talent then r and d is where you should go start with msc and get into r and d and later on you can take a break sabbatical do your phd and then come back so that's where r and d will be and then uh, you know qa qc is a regular thing it's like a real job which you know 9 to 5 you go in the lab do the testing come back the regulatory affairs is a challenging job you cannot expect a desk job all the time you may have to go to government offices and wait for hours together to get a appointment from the officer and then talk to them about so yeah it can be challenging clinical research can be a tiring job okay which um, i'm not saying it's very tiring but yeah it is tiring of course all the jobs are tiring because you have to stand but clinical research is where you have to really be uh, you know in the hospital uh, liaison with the patients doctors so that's where it is sales and marketing job uh, if it is inside sales it's not tiring uh, if it is uh, outbound sales where you are going out in the market it can be tiring but yeah it's very rewarding in terms of money and uh, biotech consulting uh, takes time it it will be uh, like you need experience and then also after that also it takes you know it uh, and requires a lot of networking now uh, i still have some more points which i would like to share so broadly if we see the biotech industry we can look at four parts the biotech industry the pharmaceutical industry the green uh, science chemistry and environmental sciences uh, industry and then there, there is the government so these are these are the four areas which you, where you have and the skills will you will require is obviously your scientific skills your collaboration skills your communication skills you um, again if you are getting into r&d you can uh, divide into Uh, academic research you can get you know governmental research and biomedical research or the regular biopharmaceutical research then um, in industry like i said regulatory affairs medical affairs uh, quality control quality assurance you'll have and uh, one thing which i would like to highlight very very clearly is you can't just get in right away you need some kind of internship some kind of references some kind of uh, introductions into the industry and if you are looking for that if you are looking to sh- you know shed your fresher tag and get placed into the industry then quick scholarship is the right way to go the link is given in the description it is quick.biotechnica.org you can always apply there and uh, try your luck and of course it has got placement assistance and a lot of 360 degree programs to uh, make you industry ready so check that out and uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or comments i will definitely reply to it not probably by a text or probably just like how i did for the uh, amreen khan's question as a video so i still have six more questions from amreen which i will be making subsequent videos for now Uh, that's all thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one till then keep shining bye bye